Coming up on DC News Now at 4, a deadly triple shooting at a recording studio in Laurel. What police know in the early hours of their investigation. Plus, what would a TikTok ban mean for those who use the app for income? It takes food off of our table. It turns our lights off. It turns off our water. It prevents us from paying rent. Nothing but sunny skies are ahead of us here for the rest of the week. We'll let you know how much our temperatures will warm up with all the sunshine. Then a price check on essentials at your local grocery store. We're helping you stretch your dollar. And we continue to celebrate remarkable women. I feel like I was born to suffer so that I can serve. Meet a Maryland veteran who is doing her part to serve her community. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And thanks for joining us on this Tuesday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. Right now, police in Laurel, Maryland are searching for answers after a deadly triple shooting at a recording studio overnight. Yeah, two people are dead. Another is still in the hospital this afternoon. DC News Now's Randy Bass is on the scene as the search continues for the shooter. Randy, we've heard from police, neighbors, and the studio today. What are they saying this afternoon? Yeah, Mark and Elisa, right now the search is still on for those suspects. Investigators still on scene here nearly 14 hours after this all happened around 1.30 this morning. Police telling us they're still in the early stages of this investigation. They say there's a chance this all could have stemmed from a fight between two groups who were inside the studio overnight. Those deadly shots fired on Lafayette Avenue in Laurel at Track House Studios, now the site of the city's first two homicides of 2024. Those two victims died at the scene. A third victim now recovering in the hospital after having surgery today. The shooter or shooters still on the run. We believe that this is an isolated event that has occurred between people that were inside the recording studio this morning and that, as I mentioned, it doesn't pose a, a significant threat to our community. Police say they've interviewed witnesses who were still on scene when they got here around 1.30 this morning. Investigators also looking into surveillance footage to help in the search. A neighbor telling us he heard at least one shot overnight, saying he hears gunfire on this block too often. Rambling cars just go up the street and boom, 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 boom. It's a shame, you know, I feel bad for the victims. Hopefully they catch the people that did it. We reached out to Track House Studios today. They tell us they're already working to ramp up safety measures. Telling DC News Now, my deepest condolences for the loved ones of the people that passed away. My prayers go out to the person that is in the hospital. Going forward, my business partners have been working relentlessly to see how we can heighten security measures in the studio. Right now, no new updates on who those victims may be. The studio and police not revealing any more information about who else may have been inside at the time. Police are asking anybody with any information on the case to come forward right away. Live in Laurel, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Randy, thank you. And taking a live look outside on this Tuesday afternoon, this is a live shot of the Kennedy Center there here at 4 3. Yeah, much nicer day today. A little slight wind, but that sun was shining and the temperatures warmed up. Let's head over to meteorologist Damon Madsen with a first look at the forecast. Damon, I guess I didn't really give you anything else to talk about. No, and I, I, <laughs> I have to admit, hand up right here, I haven't been outside in a while. Okay. I've okay. heard from some people that have come in, though. It's fantastic out there, so I will take their word for it because I'm seeing these temperatures on the map, and I can only imagine, again, how perfect it feels. My goodness, folks, it has quickly turned into a beautiful day. How about temperatures right now situated mostly in the lower to middle 70s. We have 74 degrees out there right now in DC, a couple of upper 60s out toward the Shenandoah Valley, but that's the exception, not the rule. And this was a big time change up after we dealt with chilly conditions throughout the entire day on Monday. Well, look at this. We are running 15 to 20 degrees warmer than that as we hit the peak warmth of the day right as we speak. So hopefully, folks, if you have not been out and about to enjoy this just yet, get the chance to go out there and enjoy it here before the sun goes down. Now, I will say the one leftover we have from yesterday, a little bit of wind. We're still dealing with westerly winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it has remained breezy, but not very gusty. Those strongest wind gusts are 
are long gone at this point and soon enough we will be done with that steady breeziness we've had throughout the day today. So moving forward through the rest of your evening, clear skies, mild temperatures, even as the sun begins to set a little after 7 p.m. Now, as we approach midnight there, yes, we will be starting to feel a little cool because we're keeping such clear and eventually calm conditions, but overall not looking too bad as we head into the start of the night here. Now, does this warmth hold as we head into the middle second half of the week? We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Well, developing now in Prince George's County, police say they are investigating a bold overnight robbery after a van slammed into a 7-Eleven store in Bowie, Maryland and stole the ATM inside full of cash. The incident happening around 2 a.m. at the Hilltop Plaza on Racetrack and Annapolis Roads. Now, the store attendant told police that he locked himself inside a restroom for safety. Our Leonard and Fleming joining us live outside that 7-Eleven now. Leonard, what are you learning? This clearly was a brazen robbery, and as you can see, the damage caused to the outer shell of the building that is now boarded up with plywood. People who live in the area tell me this is an all too common common occurrence here where thieves are getting more and more bold by the day. Bowie police say the incident happened around 2 a.m. when a white van backed into a, to the glass of the store's ATM. Two men in black and wearing masks then took the loaded ATM on the truck and took off, last seen going westbound on Route 50 toward DC, police say. James, who declined to give his last name, was in the store hours later looking for the ATM to pay for a new haircut nearby. I couldn't find the ATM. So in a lot of places, you know, it'll be a, a little standalone ATM on the inside. And I didn't even see the plywood. Easy money. Um, uh, I mean, you could, you say chains, sure. I've seen it done with forklifts. Uh, it just depends on what the, um, the criminals have at hand to do it. Witnesses who live in the area tell me that they've heard similar stories of heist in both in Bowie and in the area, that this is an all too common occurrence. Meanwhile, 7-Eleven officials, no comment from the corporate offices yet. So we'll bring that to you as soon as we learn more. Reporting in Bowie, Maryland, Leonard and Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. All right, Leonard, thank you. Well, new this afternoon, there's growing pressure on aircraft maker Boeing following several incidents raising safety concerns. And now this afternoon, the Arlington based company is facing multiple government investigations. You may remember this video from January when a panel blew off the Boeing 737 Max mid flight. Now the report found all four bolts from the panel were missing before the plane took off. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says the company is under enormous scrutiny after that incident and overnight a former employee who provided evidence in a whistleblower lawsuit against the company was found dead in South Carolina from what investigators say is a self inflicted gunshot wound. Now Boeing released a statement recently saying in part we will continue to cooperate fully and transparently with all government investigations and audits as we take comprehensive action to improve safety and quality at Boeing and quote there the Federal Aviation Administration is also investigating Boeing at this time. Well, an update to that home explosion that killed a firefighter in Sterling, Virginia. The cause of that explosion officially confirmed to be a leak in an underground propane tank. Loudoun County Fire Marshals say they're now working with the company who manages the tank, Southern States Cooperative, to review and update their fire codes. Until those updates are completed, officials say that customers of Southern States might experience interruptions to propane service. When the district today ease fire protesters uh, ceasefire protesters interrupted a budget meeting at the Wilson building today. About 30 to 40 people entered a fifth floor hearing room where they chanted no genocide and D.C. Council is complicit. One protester, a D.C. resident of nearly four years, has lost family in the war in Gaza and he says enough is enough. I'm heartbroken and very angered that they um, in my opinion, are, are supporting genocide right now against my people in Gaza. And uh, essentially, I pay taxes, which then go to support uh, the funding of weapons that kill my people. So we're here to say there's th this is in beyond enough. Well, the protesters were escorted out of the building by security. No arrests were made. D.C. Council was meeting to discuss possibly giving more funding 
for a national park. Turning now to sports, the Washington Commanders are remaining busy in day number two of NFL free agency, this time going after a veteran quarterback. Sports director Derek Forrest joins us to talk about the impact that this could have on the commander's quarterback situation. Derek. Yes, certainly. Uh, Adam Peters started out really slow on day one, and then they've been moving really fast here. The Washington Commanders have been extremely busy during the free agency period. They haven't made a big splash play, but they continue to make deals to improve their roster, including signing quarterback Marcus Mariota to a one-year deal. Now, Mariota was taken second overall in the 2015 draft by the Tennessee Titans, where he started for the first five years of his career. Since then, he's fit nicely into a backup role for the Las Vegas Raiders, Atlanta Falcons, and Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, signs lead to this also being the case here in Washington. So the question now becomes, what happens to Sam Howell? I think Peters will probably look to try to deal Sam Howell, if he, if he gets a deal that he likes, I think he would pull the trigger on that because there's no real need at, at this point with uh, the quarterback you're going to be drafting at number two and Mar Mariota as the entrenched backup. Well, the com uh, commanders also picked up another defensive piece Tuesday afternoon, adding their third defensive end in two days as they signed former Cowboys defensive end Dante Fowler Jr. The commanders have now signed 10 free agents in the last two days. Guys. All right.